everybody. Hello, everybody. How are you? We're live here on Feast TV, and I hope that everybody's doing well. Uh, wherever you are around the world, um, if you're in the Philippines, you're probably having your dinner. Um, so, kamusta kayo, mga kababayan, mga kapamilya at mga kapuso? Uh, I hope um, everybody's doing well. And um, we have a wonderful show, uh, you know, um, prepared for you today. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Risa Singson Kaupeng, and I'm the editor-in-chief of Feast Magazine, which uh, was formerly called the Kerygma Magazine. So um, I've uh, been, you know, I'm, I've been writing for a good part of my um, life, and uh, I, I love chronicling what God is doing in our um, world and I believe that the gospel doesn't end didn't end with a book of revelations it's a uh, continuously uh, you know being um, written by our lives and uh, we're gonna hear a story today about um, how God has uh, wonderfully delivered and healed um, somebody that you probably know somebody that you see on TV uh, but uh, he'll come on in a in a bit um, so we are uh, on Feast TV Live, and um, this is your dose of hope, inspiration, and empowerment straight on your screens and to your homes. So thank you for joining us tonight. It's our simple way of reaching out to you and making sure that um, your the Feast family is um, still, you know, um, ramdam na ramdam na alam nyong nandyan pa rin tayo at uh, magkakasama kahit na magkalayo, di ba? And uh, we're still, um, we're learning together, we're growing together here at Feast TV Live. Okay, so um, our topic, our guest actually um, today is uh, somebody who's uh, seen on, um, you know, on TV. Uh, he delivers the news to us. Um, Shay isang kapuso. Uh, hi, Cube. The Jeffrey. Sam, Sam Lorenzo. Good evening. Yay. Come, please do share our um, show so that more people can watch. And I'm going to do that also. Uh, you're working from home while listening. Yes. And Judiel Bernal. Hello. Good evening to you, Judiel. And I want to greet um, also Milena Amare. Good evening to you. Okay, I want to, uh, you know, get people. Vi, Pepito, hi. Oh, no, video showing now. Okay. Oh, you can't see me, Lindsay. Okay. Um, can you? Hi, Ryan. Can you see me? Okay. Uh, okay, there's video already. Yay. Okay, so um, I just want to get people online so that when our guest comes on, you know, uh, we're um, a good number watching. There's Hi Verly from Bulacan. And wherever you are, you know, from um, the different feasts, Maria Fe, good evening. I, I just want to see where you're from. You know, tayo sa, sa feast, uh, iba't ibang uh, mga lugar, iba't ibang mga, mga locations. So I want to see you. Hi from Hong Kong. Is this this is Ian, right? Ian um, Le Rose, tama? Hi, and um, uh, Jonathan is on. Jonathan C. God bless you too. And so um, and maybe May is listening from Pandakan, Manila. Hi. So uh, I, you know, just I'm trying to get everybody online so that when our guest comes on, ready, ready na tayo. So um, today uh, we will be meeting um, uh, somebody who's, um, you know, a survivor of COVID. Uh, we're all locked down because of this virus, and um, this person is somebody who brings the news to us. Um, you know, we're used to seeing him um, delivering the news and um, covering the news, but um, maybe, I don't know, for the first time, he's gonna tell us that he's actually the news <laughs> because he, he himself experienced um, being afflicted by this virus. And um, maybe you've seen his 
uh, his documentary um, patient number 2828 uh, here in the Philippines. So I'm going to um, call on our uh, guest, um, uh, Howie. Howie is um, our um, guest. Howie Severino is our guest. He's a, he's a you know, GMA uh journalist he's covered a lot of things um, that's happened uh, in the country and uh, you know in different parts of the country and the world but um, today he's here to tell us about what he himself experienced when uh, he got um, this virus this um, COVID-19 so um, Howie are you on? Yes magandang gabi uh, Risa at sa uh, lahat ng uh, iyong uh, uh, manunood at mga tagapakinig. Magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Mga Magandang. kapuso at mga kapamilya. Yan, syempre. Isang ano tayo, one big family tayo. <laughs> Di ba? Lalo na um, sa harap nitong ating uh, nilalabanan na COVID-19. Howie, you know, just to, you know, for, um, I, I know people know who you are, but um, yung mga involvements mo lang, uh, uh, I know you're um, also into environmentalism, is that right? And you've um, also, uh, you're also a co-founder of the um, Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. alam mo, Risa, medyo Mahal na yung career ko eh, no? At, uh, at uh, malapit na rin ako mag-senior citizen. Kaya ang dami ko ng karanasan sa buhay, ang dami ko na rin na develop ng mga interest. Um, kasama na rin doon yung pagmamahal ko sa environment at naging environmental journalist din ako. At uh, matagal na rin akong gumagawa ng uh, dokumentaryo. Uh, I've been doing Eyewitness, the documentary show on GMA7. Um, for the last uh, 18 years, uh, and uh, it's the longest running TV show now on, or public affairs show on yeah, Philippine TV. So, medyo tumagal na yung akin na rin, no? Tama yung sinabi mo, I'm used to just covering the news and telling mm -hmm. other people's stories. Pero now, uh, I, can't, I can't help but be part of the story, uh, part of the story of this big crisis. Um, I became an accidental story, but uh, <laughs> to me, it's a blessing as well because mm -hmm. I'm now I'm now able to, you know, first of all, I survived, and I'm able to uh, educate people, help uh, raise awareness, create understanding, and maybe compassion towards other patients and especially yeah. our frontliners. Uh, and, and then maybe uh, help others keep keep safe. Yeah. Howie, before I ask you about your experience, your COVID experience, what were you involved in before uh, all the, you know before the pandemic, um, you know, uh, uh, happened and before the lockdown? What stories were you covering uh, before all this happened? Well, uh, twenty twenty, you know, uh, was still pretty pretty young, no, uh, when we first started hearing about this disease. Uh, uh, alam naman natin, nag-umpisa ito sa China noong mga Disyembre and January, medyo lumala na sa, sa Wuhan and other parts of China. And then, uh, nagkaroon ng mga unang kaso sa lahat sa labas ng China, um, I think uh, late January and then February. Um, but it wasn't really part of our consciousness very much. Uh, parang normal lang ang buhay natin. In January, uh, pumutok yung Taal Volcano. So that really uh, consumed a lot of our attention. Uh, that was the big story of uh, 2020. We thought uh, that would be the biggest disaster of the year, no? Until uh, pumutok itong uh, coronavirus. Uh, I did a story in Sagada. I mean, sorry, I did a story in Baguio pala about a, uh, a woman, a young woman who wanted to, who was training for the most difficult the horse race in the world in Mongolia. Oh, so wow. you know, we completed that. Had nothing to do with the coronavirus. And yeah, and everything mm -hmm. to do with a young woman's dream. Uh, it was a feel-good story. We wanted to start the year with a feel-good story, with an inspiring story. And in February, uh, I did a documentary about um, 
uh, children being um, uh, injured or killed on the roads of uh, Metro Manila because of reckless drivers, because of the way our infrastructure is designed. So I wanted to uh, focus attention on the dangers of just crossing the street in Metro Manila. Anyone mm -hmm. who lives in Metro Manila knows that um, generally um, uh, drivers do not respect pedestrians and human <laughs> beings, essentially. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, so I mean, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to uh, focus attention on that, and maybe things will change. Pag magkaroon ng awareness, if if uh, drivers especially realize how dangerous they are to others, um, yon yun ang yun ang trabaho natin, di ba? Dito sa media, mm -hmm. is we try to focus on problems. Hopefully, uh, help others uh, find solutions, but uh, solutions can't happen uh, unless problems are exposed, and that's what I've been trying to do. So, so you are very busy doing your work as usual, covering stories, <clears throat> and then um, san ka sang lupalukal umikot at uh, na na contract mo yung COVID? I don't know. Hindi ko alam. Wow. Um, di ba? Parang, halimbawa, magkaroon ka ng sipon at uh, uh, nahawa ka, minsan di mo, di mo talaga alam eh kasi uh, marami tayong nakakahalubilo. Um, I first felt my symptoms. I got, I got a high fever on March 19. Eh, syempre, uh, sinuri ko rin no? kung sino-sino yung mga nakasalamuha ko, si, ano yung mga events na inattendan ko. Wala naman akong alam na nilapitan o nakausap na confirmed case. Um, uh, Nag-iingat naman ako. I'm physically fit, no? So I don't, mm -hmm. I didn't think I was that vulnerable. Uh, nag uh, sumunod naman ako sa safety protocols. So I think um, my infection shows that uh, uh, anyone can get this, and mm -hmm. it's just um, it's just one of those random things in life. Diba? Na kahit mag-ingat ka, yeah. uh, kahit wala kang nilapitan na pagkakit, yeah, it can happen to anyone. I think that's one of the main lessons. Kasi baka is, iniisip ng ibang tao na safe sila just just because wala silang uh, nilalapitan na confirmed case. Uh, alam so, naman natin, yeah. eh, dahil makakakonti pala ng testing, uh, maraming maraming infected na hindi natin alam na infected right. pala sila. So so when you got um, the fever, naisip mo ba agad na na it was um, corona or parang you were you know uh, saying and then the baka regular fever lang to. Okay na bahan ka na agad. Um syempre tumawid sa isip ko no dahil nasa balita na itong coronavirus and I was actually covering the crisis already. I was I just I just written an obituary for someone who died of uh, COVID. Pero for the first several days of my fever, I was in denial. Then iniisip ko rin na wala man akong nilapitan na confirmed case, wala man akong close contact, nag-iingat naman ako. I was already maintaining a safe distance uh, from other people for for a couple of weeks already. I was avoiding mass gatherings. Uh, hindi na nga ako nakipagkamayan, wala akong kabeso no? na uh, mga tao. Uh, so, naisip ko, maaring ano lang to, ordinary yung flu. Pero pagkatapos ng, paglipas ng mga isang linggo, hindi pa bumababa yung aking lagnat. Wow, nakaantay ka ng one eh, medyo week, ha? Medyo na ako. At, yes, uh, nagpatingin na ako. Um, nagpatingin na ako sa, sa isang ospital, sa emergency room. Uh, they took an x-ray. And uh, that's where I found out I had pneumonia. And then, I uh, had the yeah. COVID test. Yeah, I had the COVID test. And then the next day, I was admitted to the hospital. And I spent 11 days in the hospital. Wait, wait so and you I was, after uh, I was confirmed as You before that? Um, yes, because the only hospital that I went to uh, hindi ko na babanggitin ang pangalan. It's a big hospital. It's a big name hospital. Um, they did a good job in efficiently giving me a checkup, x-ray. Hindi ako masyadong tumagal. They were very professional. But, but they had no rooms. 
for COVID patients. Yeah. Hindi ako, kasi yeah. kung, kung may space lang sila, kung nagtumatanggap lang sila ng pasyente, hindi na ako umalis. Mm-hmm. Pero sinabi nila, hanggang dito na lang, hanggang emergency room na lang, kasi hindi, hindi kami tumatanggap ng mga COVID patients. So I went home and nagtawag-tawag ako. Um, some of my family members are doctors and uh, they helped in looking for a hospital for me and they found one. Uh, swerte na lang dahil malapit lang dito sa, sa bahay ko and uh, I drove myself there um, wow. because I didn't want anyone to drive me dahil by that time I knew uh, I was uh, infected at uh, nakakahawa na ako. Ayaw kong, yun ang isa pang pinatatakutan ko na maaring may mahawa sa akin, may meron akong mahal sa buhay na uh, mahawa sa akin. Uh, kaya nagpa-confine ako kaagad, uh, umalis ako sa bahay kaagad uh, para mahiwalay din sa pamilya ko. Howie, ano yung, what, what thoughts were running through your head when you were told that you are positive? I mean, it's the worst news that anyone can receive at a time like this. Um, well, sa totoo lang, um, one thought was, I may not make it. Um, you know, the news is full of people who don't make it. Um, but at the same time, I had to steal myself. I had to be strong because I knew that uh, morale and state of mind are very important factors in in your survival. If you're going to survive any illness, um, you need to be strong, not just physically, but mentally. Uh, and, you know, I had to... I had to make an effort because it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to be strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, I needed my yeah. family. Um, I needed to be in constant touch with my wife. But I want to say that this is this disease, this illness, is is unique in the annals of disease. Because mm-hmm. it is the most stigmatized and the loneliest disease, maybe in human history. Uh, ito lang ang sakit alagaan, ano? na kapag hindi ka pwedeng lapitan ng mga mahal mo sa buhay, uh, hindi ka pwedeng dalawin. Kahit namamatay ka na, hindi ka pa rin pwedeng dalawin dahil sobrang delikado. Uh, sobrang mataas yung chance na may mahawa. Kasi nasa hospital ka. May mga ibang pasyente doon na infected din. So yung mga taong walang sakit ay eh, ko hindi sila frontliner ibawal eh, talaga silang pumasok doon uh, mm-hmm. umiiwas sila kailangan silang umiwas so um, ang mga covid hospital malungkot medyo malungkot na mga lugar hindi tulad ng ibang ospital makikita mo yung mga bantay yung mga kamag-anak may nandun, nadadala nandun yung mga, ng ng ano ng mga brownies tayo ganun dito wala oo oh, tsaka ng pamantay sa iyo hindi ka pinapabayaan. Oo, may, may nag-overnight pa. Alam mo, mga hospital sa atin, may mga kama pa para sa mga dalaw, para sa mga bantay. No? Hindi ka talaga iiwanan. Eh. Uh, pero itong sakit na ito, it, sobrang malungkot dahil wala man lang sisilip sa'yo para kamustahin ka. Uh, How the hell do you mga to? pumapasok lang sa'yo, there's mga doktor na naka-PPE na hindi mo makikilala. How did your wife take it, the news that you were positive? Did you tell it to her uh, personally or you called her over the phone? Yes. Yes. Well, nung nasa bahay ako, nung nasa bahay ako at may lagnat, siya yung nag-aalaga sa akin. No? Uh, Siyempre, nasa ibang kwarto na siya natutulog. Uh, pero siya yung nagluluto, siya yung nagdadala ng pagkain sa akin. Um, lagi siya nandun. Total support yung asawa ko. Pero siyempre, um, nung nasa hospital na ako, eh, hindi siya makasama hanggang tawag, tawag na lang. Um, di rin siya makalapit sa hospital. Uh, so, puro food delivery or pagkain ng hospital ang kinakain ko. Uh, lagi kami nag-uusap. Um, pero kahit sa telepono kami nagko-communicate, 
in laking an malaki pa rin yung tulong niya sa akin kasi tulad ni sinabi ko um napakaimportante yung mental health mm-hmm. sa isang pasyente na may ganit lalo na yung may ganitong klasing sakit kasi yung yung mental challenge nito eh kakaiba kakaiba kasi it's very lonely it's very depressing and and, and your, your you wife also had to be tested allow that to right affect you. Your, your wife had um, to be tested no? for them, their, their family? And no, wala tayong policy na ganun. Kasi the policy of the Department of Health is that kung wala kang sintomas and wala kang close contact sa isang pasyente, well, may close contact sa akin, pero she hasn't shown any symptoms, um, hindi justified yung test sa kanya. Uh, kasi kulang-kulang nga yung mga test, di ba? Hindi ka basta pwede magpa-test. Hindi ka pwede lumapit sa hospital at wala kang lagnat, wala kang nararamdaman at magpa-test ka. Um, unless, of course, VIP ka at malakas ka. Alam naman natin, nangyayari din yan. Pero hindi ganun yung asawa ko eh. Hindi naman, hindi naman siya magdi-demand na magpa-test kung labag yun sa protocol at sa patakaran. And so far, sa awan ng Diyos, hanggang ngayon, uh, ang pamilya ko ay wala pa rin sintomas. Uh, malusog pa rin sila, uh, masigla sila. Uh, I, and I think that's, I think partly, that's partly because um, medyo naging disiplinado kami sa pagka-quarantine. Uh, kahit mm. nung nakalabas na ako sa hospital, ay eh, naka-isolate pa rin ako, iwalay pa rin ako sa kanila, at uh, hindi ako lumalapit. In fact, umuwi sila sa probinsya. Uh, habang ako ay nasa hospital. Yeah. Yes. At nung uwi ako dito sa Quezon City, ay wala na sila sa bahay. Nag-iisa na ako rito. May, so, may, may, um, may kasama na ako first. Pero mm-hmm. medyo malayo siya sa ako. Uh, those days, how many days were you in the hospital? You said uh, 20... I was, in, uh, I was in the hospital for 11 days. 11, 11 days. days. They were very... Okay, that's not, that's not so long compared to other people who um, uh, were patients chance no i've heard people in 31 days uh 28 days so god well, has been good to you huh? uh well <laughs> yeah that's the that's uh, the half full way of looking at it but believe me if you're a patient 11 days is a long time even one yeah. day is a long yeah. time uh yeah. if it was not easy um i wouldn't say that i'm well uh, I, I feel that I'm lucky, um, but the 11 days was not easy. I'm lucky because there are people who spend even just one week in the hospital, uh, but, but they died. Right? Uh, there are people who spend just a few days and they don't survive. Ako, I spent 11 days. I spent uh, more days in the hospital than other people, but I survived. So, ano yan eh? Parang... Russian roulette, diba? Um, you really don't know why you survived and why others did not. So you can only try so, to pay it forward. And when you were there alone, um, I'm sure you had a lot of time to think and to pray. What What were the thoughts going on um, in your mind? How did your prayer sound? <laughs> Well, I had I had a lot of thoughts of death, and uh, I couldn't help it. Um, I couldn't get the thoughts of death out of my head, and that's that's basically what was driving me crazy. I was I was going crazy in the hospital. Uh, delirium na ako. Um, I really thought at one point I was going to die. Um, I think it was my third or third night in the hospital. Uh, I thought I was going to die. Um, I started seeing my dead parents. I started seeing my best friend mm-hmm. who passed away. Um, and it felt like um, they were inviting me to join oh, them. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. I, I wrote a will. Nagbili na ako uh, sa asawa ko kung mga request ko sa kanya, kung mga, mga pangarap namin na sina, pinakaiusapan ko siya na ituloy niya uh, kahit wala na ako. Um, nagbili na ako sa anak ko na alagaan yung nanay niya. Mga ganon, no? I got really morbid. And then, um, I called up my wife. 
uh, para magpaalam. Well, isip ko, if I'm gonna go, at least, papaalam ako. Uh, you know, even if you're not sure, <laughs> if you have any mm. any feeling at all, um, and especially you don't, you don't want the people you left behind. Yeah, but my wife, you know, when I called her, uh, she wouldn't accept it. Um, she wouldn't. She refused to accept that I was going to die. Sinabihan niya ako kaga, no, you're not going to die. Uh, just listen to me. And then she helped me meditate. And she made me imagine good thoughts. She made me imagine um, uh, she made me imagine walking on the beach. She made me imagine the, the scent of lavender fields. She made me imagine wow. getting a massage. We relived some good memories that we've had together. And unti-unting nawala yung mga negative thoughts. And pumasok sa isip ko yung positive thoughts. And dun ako nakatulog. Uh, kasi dalawang gabi ako hindi makatulog eh. That's isa pa yun, no? Because of anxiety siguro, maaring dulot din ng gamot. Um, pero halo-halo na, isipin mo, humihina yung katawan ko, alam mo na mayroon kang malupang sakit, hindi ka makapagpahinga, hindi ka makatulog, hindi na ako makakain. Dahil yung isang sintomas mm-hmm. ng sakit na to eh, wala, wala yung panlasa mo. So, eh ako, may hindi akong oh, kumain. Hindi wow. naman kasi may pagkain ibinibigay sa akin. Uh, pero hindi ako makakain. I would chew and then I would swallow. So, naisip ko, combi- combining all of that, sabi ko, how can I survive? How am I going to survive? Mm. Um, did, but with the help of my wife. Did you reach and, a point na parang yan, nag- nagsawander ka? Yes, I wanted to surrender. Did you, did you reach uh, that point? I was ready to surrender. Yes, I did. I, I have to admit um, that I felt weak. I lost. I lost my will. Um, I was. I was trying to. I know. I was trying to be strong. Pero at that point, I know. Eh, um, I was really feeling weak, and I thought it was really the end. And um, but I prayed. You know, I prayed. Uh, I, I. I was promising God. You know uh, that. If he gave me a second chance, I would be a better person. Ganon, no? Na, I, nagpapangako ako ng ganon. Mm-hmm. But, but at the same time, you know, I have to admit, I started feeling guilty. Sabi ko, you know, magdadasa lang ako ng ganito pag may kailangan ako sa Diyos. I mean, I haven't exactly been the most <laughs> prayerful person. Uh, but then, you know, I, I'm human. I needed something, so why not pray for it? I, 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 wa- I wanted to live. I wanted to survive. And I was doing everything I could. Um, I made promises um, to myself. I said, I'm going to be a better person. Just let me survive. I promised God that um, I would change. And I, I, had, I really reflected on my life. I regret ko. Maybe I haven't spent enough time with loved ones. I regret ko when I haven't paid full attention. When someone wants to talk to me because, you know, dami kong ibang iniisip. Um, I kind of regretted that, you know, uh, a lot of, a big part of my life, I've just been thinking about myself. Diba? So, one of the things I promised myself and, and to God was that if I survived this, I would be a less selfish person. I would be more selfless. I would be of more service. I would, I would, kind of derive some kind of meaning from this experience because kumbaga di ko naman hinanap ito pinili ako nitong experience na to eh mm-hmm. so naisip ko i have i cannot look at this as simply misfortune hindi hindi to especially when i well when i survived naisip ko you know it's unfortunate i had to go through this pero hindi ako minalas eh Hindi ako minalas kailan dahil ba, ang minalas. Kailangan mo experience. Mo, yeah. Um, uh, you know, everybody everybody tells themselves 
ask themselves, uh, uh, if you go to something like this, if you're if out of, like, ako out of 100 million Filipinos, ako yung, ako yung pinili para, para makaranas nito. Kasi, isipin nyo, I was patient 28, 28, you know, wala pang tatlong libo yung nagkasakit dahil sa COVID out of millions of Filipinos. So, iisipin ko, bakit ako? Bakit ako? May ginawa ba akong masama? Pinaparusahan ba ako? Etc. Pero alam mo, nung medyo pagaling na ako, nasa hospital pa lang ako, nagbago yung pananaw ko eh. Nung pagaling na ako, nung bumagsak na yung, yung lagnat ko at pumasok na sa si isip ko na may malaki na yung chance ko na makakasurvive ako. Ang pananaw ko naging, ano eh, nagbago eh. Mula nung yung why me, why me, yung parang mayroon akong sinisisi. Bakit ako? Bakit ako? Bigla na lang naging why not me? Why not me? Ako, I'm the right person to to go through this. Why? Because I'd rather that it happened to me than one of my loved ones. I, you know, I couldn't, it would have been very hard for me also kung nangyari ito sa asawa ko o sa anak ko. Number two, I, meron akong kakayahan eh. May kakayahan ako na mag-educate ng tao. I have the willingness uh, to educate, to, you know, to, to agree, to, to face you. Alam mo, hindi naman lahat ng mga naging pasyente, hindi naman lahat ng survivor gagawin ito. Eh. Hindi ko rin sila masisisi. Mm-hmm. Because nakakatakot itong sakit na to. Um, uh, it's not just scary for the patient, but people will be scared of you. People mm-hmm. will be may afraid stigma. of you. May stigma ka talaga. May, 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 kahit gumaling ka na. Ako, hindi na ako nakakahawa. Eh. May antibodies na ako. Nag-negative na ako dalawang beses sa sakit na to. So, nalampasan ko na at yung isang konsuelo ay hindi na ako nakakahawa. Mm-hmm. At mababa na yung chance ko na magkakasakit ako ulit. Para tong measles o yung bang virus, pag nagkaroon ka na ng virus, mawala na sa katawan mo, can talk. maliit na yung chance na mahawa ka mm-hmm. ulit. Hindi ka tulad ng ikaw, halimbawa, hindi ka pa naman yata nagkakasakit, di ba? Ikaw, pwede ka pa magkakasakit eh. Pwede ka pa ma-infect. Mm-hmm. Ako, Malit na yung chance ko. So there's a certain peace of mind, not just for myself, but for my family, and for my loved ones, for my colleagues, na kahit lapitan ko sila at magkasakit, ay hindi ko naman gagawin yun, ano? pero at least meron akong peace of mind na malamang walang magkakasakit dahil sa akin. Wala nang magkakasakit dahil sa akin. And that's a big, that's a big relief. Um, yeah. So, uh, but uh, maraming hindi nakakaalam yan. They think na mm-hmm. naging pasyente ka, naging infected ka, naging positibo ka, eh dapat nilalayo ang kapalagi, no? Not just that. And, and, and uh, yung iba, actually, yung iba, you're, 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 you're even able to help, di ba? You're I'm even, sorry. Even able to help. You're even able to help because um, your plasma now is, uh, um, I, I know they, they use the plasma of um, people who've been healed, di ba? To help other yeah, patients. Yeah, uh, well, I want to show you. Yeah, I just donated plasma uh, before before I joined you for this mm-hmm. for this webinar for this interview. I was in the I was in the hospital. I was in PGH donating plasma. I was there for five hours donating plasma. Ito, oh, ito. Eh. Kinunan ako ng dugo. Uh, they got 486 ml of plasma from me. Um, so I was sitting there for almost two hours uh, giving blood. Um, but it was a long process kasi mm-hmm. i-test pa yung dugo ko, titinan pa kung may antibodies, uh, etc. Um, but yes, tama. Uh, makakatulong ako. I'm willing. No? So, mm-hmm. again, uh, I, I, felt, I felt that it's a blessing. It's an opportunity. Uh, uh, so, Yun nga eh, nagbago yung pananaw ko eh. Na from the, be- the beginning, naisip ko, wow, bakit ako, you know, was feeling bad. I was, you know, parang meron akong gustong sisihin. Uh, sinisisi ko sarili ko na siguro may ginawa akong masama, kaya ako pinap... But you know, um, now, especially now, uh, I only have positive thoughts about my my experience. I don't want to repeat it. I don't want anyone else to repeat it yeah. or to go through it. Pero... Tulad na sinabi ko, um, 
meron akong pananaw ngayon na may may merong mabuti o ginhawa na may idudulot ito. Mm-hmm. Number one, nakapagbigay ako ng plasma. Yeah. I, I was, it's a gift. It was a gift to me that I can give to others. And I am able mm-hmm. to save the life of others. Isipin mo, nakaupo lang ako doon. Di ba? Pinukunan lang akong dugo. I don't have to do anything. Maari na akong makasagip ng buhay. I can talk to your viewers right now and help mm-hmm. educate them about this disease. And ako, I, I did not learn about this disease just from reading about it on the internet. I lived through it and I survived it. Yeah. And I think I can offer two things. One is information. Number two, inspiration. Um, mm-hmm. Because people want to know that it's possible to survive. Kasi ang dami natin nababalita ng mga namamatay. Di ba? Yung mga... Uh, mostly negative things are coming out in the news about this kasi bihira naman yung mga survivors na lumalantad at uh, nagsasalita in the open because um, it's difficult and Or also they don't have the platform they don't really have to talk. yeah they don't have the platform I'm that, sorry uh, uh, most people yes that's the right I mean, that Yeah, I understand that. Uh, that's why I cannot waste it. Mm-hmm. I cannot waste it. Um, uh, I, you know, I, it, that's why, you know, sa akin, my, my illness and my survival have to mean something. What does it mean? Mm-hmm. What does it mean to survive? Hanggang doon na lang ba? Papasalamat na lang ako? Wala ba akong obligasyon? Wala ba akong responsibilidad? Yan ang pumapasok sa isip ko. I'm not speaking for others. I, I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to create that kind of pressure for others. But I think everyone, everyone who has gone through any kind of crisis, personal crisis, physical crisis, mental crisis, um, they have to process it and figure out what it means. Mm-hmm. What it really means. I mean, big picture dito, um, because yun yai pinili ka, di ba? Pinili ka para maranasan ito. Um, it's it's a it's a privilege actually. It became a privilege for me because yeah. nakaroon ako ng maraming aral eh. Um, mm-hmm. nakaroon ako ng maraming pagbabago sa buhay ko. My my my, I feel transformed. Eh. Um, you know, I I know that um, I have a new appreciation for life. I know that um, in a very deep way, I know, know that. Um, One day, I will not survive. Diba? One day, I will not survive. And I have to be ready. And I want... I, I don't want to exit with regrets. Kasi yung, yung naisiisip ko sa hospital, eh, if, if I go now, I don't feel I'm ready. Kasi marami mm-hmm. pa akong regrets. Naisip ko, dapat ginawa ko to. Dapat, you know, when this person asked me for a favor, dapat pumayag ako, pero I was too busy. Or... Gusto akong kausapin ito, pero yun na nga, uh, di, di, wala akong panahon. You know, um, ang dami kong, ang dami kong naisip na ganun. So, um, I became determined na maybe, maybe that can be one of my goals, is to just have fewer regrets. Yung mga gusto ko talagang gawin, kailangan ko nang gawin. Yeah, do you feel like... Yung mga gusto like, uh, kailangan ko nang gawin. Do you feel like God gave you a second chance? Like, meron ka pang mission na kailangan tapusin? <laughs> Well, um, yeah, uh, you know, ito, nabigyan ako ng bagong mission eh. Uh, kasi, well, una, ang daming, ang daming gustong kumausap sa akin, katulad mo. Uh, um, hindi naman ako nagpipresenta, di ba? Pero hindi ako tumatanggi. Mm-hmm. Dahil alam ko, um, meron akong obligasyon eh. I mean, bibihira lang itong experience na to eh. Mm-hmm. Di ba? I mean, I was patient 28, 28, and ilan, lang, ilan pa lang kaming nakaka-survive. Or, or fully recovered. Yung ibang ibang survivors, hindi pa fully recovered eh. Di ba? Medyo may complications pa. Um, ako, ay, hindi ko naman masasabing, walang, you know, wala akong nararamdaman ngayon. Um, lag, nag-iingat pa rin ako. I'm still, you know, I'm still not back to what I was before. Maybe I never will. Mm-hmm. But the fact is, I'm still here on earth and I'm able to talk to you and to your viewers and 
I still have my mind. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and um, I feel like I have, any, I have a second life, you know? I have, a, I have part two of my life uh, ahead of me. How we took our and, <laughs> Huh? How we 2.0. <laughs> yeah, that's one way of looking at it, no? And I have to make good. Yeah, it has to be. Diba? Usually, mga 2.0, dapat yeah. improvement yan eh. Diba? Na wala yung, mm -hmm. yung mga bugs, na ayos na yung mga, yung mga ibang problema. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I hope to be an improved version. I hope to be an improved version. And I hope to be of service. How? I, I really yeah, hope to be of kind you know, of service. Before we run out of time, uh, frontliners. Frontliners. I, I, I know um, COVID survivors have such great respect for those who cared for them. How was your experience? Because I know they are only able to visit you during those 11 days that you were confined in the hospital. Yeah, you know, we uh, always have to be the frontliners, no? not just like Bayani, uh, etc. Um, sa totoo lang, kami mga naging pasyente, kami talaga yung nakatuklas nito. We experience their heroism. Um, uh, if you're not a patient, you're, you're just observing them. Di ba? Uh, you're not really affected by, by, their, by the risks that they take. Eh. But if you're a patient, uh, you basically your life is in their hands. Eh. And um, and they are taking care of you at great risk. You know that because they can see what you're going through and they must know that they can easily be you. They can easily be that patient even if they are careful because every day exposed sila sa risk at saka sa infection. And yet, ginagawa pa rin nila. Nagpapasya sila na pumunta sa hospital at alagaan ka. Ako, I was not there voluntarily. I was not there because of a mission. I was there because I was sick and I didn't have a choice. Itong mga frontliners, my cho choice yan eh. Pwede naman mag-resign, pwede naman umayaw, mm -hmm. pwede naman, di ba? Pwede mag-absent. Pero pinili nilang maging frontliner. Pwede, pinili nilang ma-expose sa'yo para maalagaan ka. Eh, kahit hindi ka kilala. Di ba? Eh, magkano lang naman ang sweldo ng mga yan. So, Di mo rin masasabi na ginagawa nila yan just for money, just for a job. No. Ano yan eh? It's, it's, a, it's a mission, you know. Sobrang, it's, it's one of the purest missions I know of. Because that, the chances of getting sick. Uh, alam mo, meron akong naging nurse. Ang una yan sinabi sa akin. Alam mo, nanunod ako ng documentary, nanunod ako ng show mo. Alam mo, dapat may gumawa ng show. Dapat may gumawa ng documentary tungkol sa buhay ng frontliners. Alam mo, ang sinabi ko kagad sa, sa kanya, ikaw yun, ikaw ang gagawa ng documentary na yun at tuturuan kita. And that's how I cope with some of the days I was in the hospital. Meron akong tinuturuan gumawa ng documentary. Um, bukas wow. siya sa akin at uh, mabilis siyang natuto at Tinulungan niya ako gumawa ng documentary. I produced a documentary about my experience as a patient while I was in the hospital. Yeah. Shoot. So, um, so, your experience as a frontliner, it was not simply as a patient. It was as a creative collaborator with a, with a frontliner about life in, a, in the isolation wing of a COVID hospital. Kumbaga, that's one of the most forbidden places now mm. on earth. Walang journalist na makakapasok dyan. Walang civilian na makakapasok dyan kung wala siya. That's right. Ako lang ang makakapasok doon na journalist. Masakit ako eh. So, isa pa yun. So, there was a reason for me to be there. because I, And there was a reason for me to survive. Because, number one, I had to teach this nurse how to shoot and how to collaborate with me. Kung hindi, wala kami magagawa. Wala akong magagawang dokumentaryo. Nakahiga lang doon. Nakatali yung kamay ko sa IV line na nakakabit sa isang baka 
kapital na nakatayo isang stand no hindi ako makagalaw paano ako magshoot paano ako makaka paano ako makaka-produce pero dahil meron akong frontliner na nurse na na handang tumulong sa akin handang magshoot hindi lang mag-alaga sa akin pero handang mag-collaborate para gumawa dahil nakita rin niya yung halaga na ipinapakita yung sakripisyo ng mga frontliner yung buhay ng mga frontliner at paano sila nakikitungo sa mga pasyente ay eh, sinikap talaga niya na na i-document yung buhay niya hindi lang yung buhay sa ospital pero yung pag-uwi niya sa bahay yung malungkot na lakad niya pauwi sa dilim dahil wala pa public transportation yung mga yan dahil magkailan magtrabaho yeah, naglalakad lang na, naglalakad pauwi kalahati ng oras niya nagdaan no yeah and then pagdating sa bahay wala siyang kasama dahil hiwalay din sa pamilya ayaw rin niya mahawa yung pamilya niya sa pero sa iba nakatira yung pamilya niya so parang ako rin yan hiwalay sa pamilya nasa ospital malungkot so in a way we were kind of we were really partners in this experience and in the production that we did no so nagawa din naman namin yun and to me that gave meaning to what what both of us were going through um having this having produced this creative product um i think gave us meaning gave meaning to what we were going through and gave gave meaning to our experience of knowing each other so again that that kind of reinforced the my reflection that um it really had to be me i i really felt that there was a reason why i was chosen to do this and i uh, was chosen to to be in that hospital and to even endure this i think you know talaga you have to you have to assume that there is some kind of big decision maker behind all of this diba uh, may may Someone decided. Hindi to basta random. That's right. And um, so your your message to whoever's watching us, and you know maybe there are people who are watching us who are struggling. A lot of people actually are struggling now, whether you're sick of COVID or not. Um, but uh, I, I see in your um, experience that finding meaning in all the suffering or in what you're going through um helped you get through what uh you know that that this this um sickness uh what can you what can you tell people now who are watching um who are going through all kinds of struggles in this in these times well um i guess Life is life is a, a struggle, no? I mean, no matter what your station is in life, uh, I have to admit, I've been luckier than a lot of people. You know, nakapag-aral ako, meron akong magandang trabaho, meron akong pamilya na nagmamahal sa akin, pero hindi lahat nagkaroon ng ganitong experience, di ba? Um, and I hope, I hope not many go through this experience. So, it hasn't exactly been a charmed life, di ba? Nag-suffer din ako. Um, but, I guess you just have to try to derive some kind of meaning from it and try to derive some lessons and kind of look at the bright side. Look at the bright side of things. Kasi nga, nasa hospital pa lang ako, naisip ko na, mas mabuti nangyari sa akin to kaysa mga mahal ko sa buhay. And naisip ko rin na um, kung makasurvive ako, kung mabigyan ako ng second chance, Marami akong magagawa. Marami akong magagawa yung in terms of sharing this experience. Ah, uh, tulad nitong ginagawa natin dahil tayo nasa communications field naman tayo. So, isang napaka-importanting tool 'yon, no? Uh, for serving others, no? Meron tayong technology to do that. Kahit hindi tayo makalabas ng bahay ngayon, ay eh, nakaka-communicate pa rin tayo. And we have these important messages, no? And then also, um Uh, another way I was I derived meaning is yun nga nakapagbigay ako ng dugo. I mean, what it's you're giving life to somebody else, no? So hmm. to me, that's another silver lining or a blessing that you can derive from something that you know uh, in another if in another sense was a kind of uh, stroke of bad luck, di ba? I mean, medyo 
medyo misfortune din naman yung nangyari sa akin but if you if you're positive about it and you know my wife showed me the way to be positive um um you can you can have a you can even feel good about the opportunities that mm. this this experience gave me i mean you may kasabihan eh na never let a crisis go to waste diba every crisis yeah. I is an opportunity. So, yeah, so so never think that a crisis is just a crisis. Diba? A crisis is also end. an opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but you have to yeah, but you have to have that attitude. Diba? It also starts with an ap- mm-hmm. attitude. Kasi nga, kung iisipin mo mo lang lagi na, wow, ang malas ko, kawawa naman ako. Diba? Wala na akong pag-asa, wala na akong magagawa. Well, then you're not looking at crisis as an opportunity uh, for something. Um, mm-hmm. It can even be, you know, I mean, even the worst of situations, if you make the best of it, you can be an inspiration. Even if you end up dying, you can you can leave inspiration. You can still leave a legacy. Diba? With and and that, that's, just, that's what you've been to us. That's what you've been to us, Howie. Thank you for sharing. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad for this opportunity. Yeah. And um, yeah. I'm glad to share. I'm happy to share. Before we end, I, I want to pray for you and I want to pray for all of our, our viewers. But before we do that, um, you do you have any announcements? Um, I know you have social media. Um, where can people follow you? Your oh, I'm everywhere. I have Facebook. I'm on Facebook. I have a personal Facebook page. I'm, I have a fan page. I'm on Instagram. On, ang ang wala lang ako. Hindi na ako na TikTok, no? Pasensya na. Uh, hindi. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I do, I, I do Twitter. Um, I'm on Viber. I'm on WhatsApp. I, mm. I, you know, I do Messenger. Uh, and I maintain a couple of pages. Uh, I maintain a by buying page. I, I teach by buying, by the way, online. Uh, so you know, I'm pretty accessible. Wow. I'm pretty accessible. I'm easy to find. Yeah. Thank you so much, Howie, for your time. And um, we'll again, as I promised, we'll close with a prayer for you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we thank you for uh, the miracle that. Um, is how we Severino. Thank you for all that you've um, done in this life and th- that you continue to do. Thank you, Lord God, for um, the influence that he has and uh, the lessons, Lord, that uh, people uh, are learning about um, this disease and how um, to survive from this disease because of what he's gone through. I pray that you keep him healthy, Lord. Bless his family. Bless his work. Continue to use him, Lord, to proclaim um uh, the truth, uh, good news um, uh, in his in his field. And we pray, Lord, also for, for all of our viewers, we uh, pray for your peace, Lord, that in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of um, all this anxiety, Lord, we know that you are the peace that passes all understanding. So we thank you and we receive that peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much again, Howie. Salamat sa oras, salamat sa uh, kwento, at sa storya mo, at sa inspirasyon. God bless you. Salamat din. Amen. Amen. Salamat. Thank you so much. Okay. So, brothers and sisters, that was Howie Severino. And, um, you know, uh, so many good things to thank God for. Uh, before I go, I just want to um, invite you to follow me. You can see my um, FB and my Instagram accounts over there. And every Monday, every Monday at 8 p.m., I give an online live Bible study um, called Hunger Club. So you can join us also um, online. It, it's usually on my FB account. Um, so um, just keep 
keep the faith. You know, I love what um, how we said that uh, you know all, all anything um, has a silver lining, and that um, a crisis is something that's entrusted to you. Um, that you have to make something out of it. I just love how he was, he was able to squeeze uh, something that could have been so tragic or is is actually tragic, but really call so many life lessons from it. And that's what I want to encourage you um, during this time. You know, no matter what hardship, no matter what um, you're going through right now, um, everybody is suffering. But um, uh, you know, what yung suffering natin, pwede natin going offering. Um, Randy Borromeo was uh, talking about that in in um, uh, a recent show. Uh, you know, we can we can turn it into a sacrifice. The suffering that we're going through, we can turn it into a sacrifice when we offer it to God. So I um, pray that you keep healthy. Uh, I claim Psalm 91 for all of you uh, viewers that God will continue to um, guard and protect all of us. So till next time, this is Teresa Singh Son Kao Peng. Tomorrow, um, our guest will be Dr. Didoy Lubaton, and he's going to be talking about how to, to um, keep uh, yourself um, uh, healthy, not just physically, but mentally as well. Um, join us also. Uh, so that's going to be tomorrow at 7.30 for Authors Live with Doc Didoy Lubaton um, discussing about mental health. So thank you for joining us. See you again next time. I'm Risa Singh Sankaupeng. God bless you all.